Okay, great. So now let's talk about QED. And I'm uh, and. Uh, So, um, so let's first talk about QED. And we have talked about the Maxwell action. Said so here is a Lagrangian density. We have F mu mu minus J mu A mu. Okay? And J mu should be a conserved current. Because the, uh, for the consistency of the Maxwell equation, okay, remember, JMU has to be conserved. So, so now the question is, what provides this JMU? Okay, so, so now let's imagine, now let's introduce some other fields. And now imagine we have some Dirac fermions. We have some fermionic field, say with the Lagrangian. Okay, so this is the Lagrangian for the uh, for the Dirac fermion, and then we discussed that for Dirac fermion, and then there's a conserved current because there's a global symmetry. There's a U one global symmetry. Corresponding to psi goes to exponential i alpha psi, with alpha to be a constant. Okay, and then this leads to a loss of current, J mu, which is conserved. Okay, so now if we want to couple the fermions to the Maxwell field, then it's natural uh, we uh, identify this J mu with this J mu. Okay, because both uh, uh, here we need a conserved current, and here we have a conserved current. Okay, so so it's natural to write down the theory, and then this J mu just replaced by this J mu. That's why I use the same notation. So so then that gives us the Lagrangian for QED, which is we have the Maxwell. Which is the free uh, photon, and then we have the free fermion. Free fermion, but then the fermion and the photon are coupled together through this. Okay. So so now. This is a cubic term, okay? So now this is an interaction term, okay? So now this is an interaction term, and this E can be uh, play two roles, okay? Can be considered as a coupling constant, which essentially the E, which just determines the the coupling strength between the psi and the A, okay? If E is bigger, then of course the coupling is stronger. And E can also be considered, so plays a dual role. One way, uh, one role is you consider as a coupling, and the second role is you can consider as a unit of charge. Okay, uh, a unit of charge. Big, big, because when we talk about the loss of current, uh, uh, this is conserved. You can uh, uh, you can multiply this by an arbitrary number. This is still conserved. Uh, this is still conserved. And when we multiply, uh, uh, and uh, here, uh, it just means that the, uh, the unit of this current is uh, given by E, okay? So, so the E plays two roles here, okay? And then, of course, this E is just our standard electric charge. So if you take the psi to be, give, uh, to be electron, and then, and then this will be standard electric charge for the electron, and then this will be a theory which uh, 
governs the interaction between the electron and the photon. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Uh, sorry? Uh, like, how come, how come different particles have, like, charges that are multiples, integer multiples of each other? Yeah, yeah. And you might think in this framework that you can kind of set the coupling constant to whatever you like. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. So in this framework, indeed, uh, 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 this E can be arbitrary. And then, uh, and then different particles can have different charge. For example, uh, uh, if we couple these two electrons, this will be E, E. And then if we couple this to muon, so in principle we have some E tilde which does not have to be the same as this E. Indeed, and, uh, and it's a highly unusual feature that the, uh, uh, in, uh, in nature what we observed, the charge seems to be quantized. Uh, there seems to be multiple or, 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 uh, yeah, uh, 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 of some charge. Uh, and that cannot be explained using this framework. It has to be uh, explained using some other framework, say, uh, uh, sometimes called the grand unified theory can be used to uh, uh, explain that. Yeah. Other questions? So I'm a little confused. Um, in this middle section, you're showing me the conserved current from the muon to the neutron. Yeah. So then, what was the analogy you're making that it can be, you can take the muon to the neutron? Maxwell Lagrangian? Yeah. Just, just an actual identification. identification. But, like, on the, like, this Lagrangian doesn't have this. You want symmetry for this frame up because it doesn't even exist there. So yeah, yeah, how can you yeah. Those, yeah, so I, uh, no, I couple them. Oh, okay, so, so you're just taking inspiration now to, to add both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we do here. We add both of them. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a theory with uh, a photon and a fermion, and now their coupling is through this J, and this J is given by this one. Okay, other questions? Okay, good, good. So um, we can also slightly rewrite this uh, Lagrangian in a somewhat different way. Okay, so we can, LQD can also be written as in the following way. Okay, so we can also rewrite this as one quarter of mu mu. So this part we don't change. But we can actually combine these two terms together in the following way. We write it as i psi bar, and then gamma mu, I introduce a new derivative called d mu minus m psi. And this d mu, capital D mu psi is equal to partial mu psi minus i e a mu psi. Okay. So, so this is the same as that because the first term here just give you this term, and the second term, this e, e a mu psi term, just give you this e a mu psi bar. Yeah, uh, uh, I just give you that. Term. Okay. And uh, so mathematically, these two are just completely equivalent. I just slightly re uh, rewrote it. But writing this way actually makes one new property of the theory uh, uh, manifest. Okay, so so this theory, so we know that this theory has a gauge symmetry, but this theory only have a global symmetry. Okay, this theory only have a global symmetry. This alpha must be a constant. Okay. So now when we combine together, it turns out that this new Lagrangian actually have a new, uh, 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 has, a, uh, 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 has a generalized uh, a gauge symmetry. Okay, so, so L max, so L QD is invariant, turns out to be invariant. Under the following, So you still you take a mu goes to a mu plus lambda, partial mu lambda x, and then now you transform psi also by a local transformation. You 
transform it by exponential i. So now this E is electric charge log uh, uh, this E is different, okay? So now you can transform psi by actually a local phase. Actually now uh, can define uh, uh, this arbitrary function lambda. So you can show that actually this QUD is invariant under this transformation. Okay, so, so if I call this a mu prime, if I call this psi prime x, okay? So you can check yourself with this transformation, this d mu psi, so this d mu prime, psi prime, okay? So d mu prime is obtained by, by this d mu, you replace the uh, 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 a mu by a mu prime, and then here you, you can show that this is equal to exponential i e lambda x d mu psi, okay? So it turns out in this combination, okay, in this combination, so when you make a, 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 a such a local transformation on psi, when you take a derivative, then, then you get the extra term. Okay, you get the extra term from taking the derivative on this lambda. But when you have this combination with a mu, but a mu also transform with additional lambda term, partial mu lambda term, and then these two terms just cancel, okay? So in the end, uh, uh, this d prime mu, uh, uh, d prime mu prime actually transform in a very simple way. Okay, transform in a very simple way. Yes? Yeah, yeah, we replace a mu by a mu prime. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. So, so this tells you, and, uh, and then this transform very simply, and, and then this transform very simply, and psi bar just, there's no derivative here, then this straightforward just transform as the uh, 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 exchange of balance E, and then, then we conclude, okay, so we conclude that LQED is invariant, okay, under this transformation. Okay, it, it indeed is invariant, okay. So, so we call it gauge invariant. So now this is the uh, a generalized gauge symmetry, which now you also transform the fermions. Okay, you also transform the fermions. Okay, any questions on this? So now we can turn it around. So, so let's, uh, 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 let us review our logic, okay? So, so we s first start with the Maxwell theory. So the Maxwell theory, there's a J here, which you need to pro provide. And then, then, then from the fermionic theory, uh, uh, the fermionic theory have a lateral J, and then we just combine these two theory, and then by replacing that J, uh, by the uh, by the J uh, arise uh, uh, naturally from the fermions. But it turns out when we combine them together, this theory actually have a, a generalized gauge symmetry, which you also now can transform psi locally. Okay, uh, uh, you can transform psi locally uh, and the, uh, uh, with this nice structure. Okay, so this theory have this nice structure and then now uh, 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 you can uh, uh, transform uh, uh, psi uh, uh, also locally. So we can also turn this around. So we can say, if we require, so if we call this thing to be star, so if we require, The theory of a mu and psi to be invariant under star, and then that uniquely uh, 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 leads to 
the interaction, then, uh, then that leads, yeah, maybe not uniquely, uh, then that leads to the interaction of the form J mu A mu. Okay, it just leads to this kind of interaction. Okay, so, so we continue the round, we say, okay, let's, using a different logic, we want to couple the photon and the, and the psi together. Uh, we want to couple A mu uh, and psi together. And we know that A mu previously has a gauge symmetry. And now I want to generalize that gauge symmetry to include the fermions. And then, and then I require the full CV to be invariant under this symmetry. And this requirement then require that the interaction between them must have this form. Okay. Yeah, uh, 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 let me write more explicitly uh, uh, interaction of the form psi bar, gamma mu, psi a mu, okay? So that will lead to this kind of interaction. So, so the reason this thinking, uh, uh, even though this is just a rephrase of what we, we just did, uh, uh, this rephrase is actually powerful. Okay, here it means that when we impose this gauge symmetry, we actually can deduce the interactions. Can deduce interactions. Okay, uh, we can actually deduce interactions. Just by requiring, uh, uh, we can fix interactions by, uh, by requiring certain kind of symmetries. Yes? Yeah, that's what no, uh, 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 motivates me. Uh, uh, a mu, uh, 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 Maxwell theory already have a gauge symmetry. Uh, 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 when I couple to Fermi, I just want to generalize it. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I guess like why should we know why should we like know like if we start from like a gauge symmetry and look at interactions uh, logic, then why should we know that there should be like a scalar function that like is a local capacity that the thing like why should like why should it be like that? No, be, no uh, uh, because we already have this, right? We just want to generalize this. Oh. The Maxwell theory already have this. We we just need to generalize this to Fermion. And then there's a larger generalization because the fermion is already invariant under the uh, global phase symmetry. We just need to generalize in the way so that to make it local. Okay, yes? So in quantum mechanics, when we do like a single particle in a much mechanics field, yeah. the gauge transformation on the wave function is the same. Yeah. It's like right. that. Is there a reason why that's? Yeah, 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 it's the same. Uh, uh, um, um, yeah. Yeah, there is a reason because the uh, you can uh, um, yeah the reason is that the um, uh, yeah it's is that the uh, this when you go to long relativity case this reduces just to one particle quantum mechanics so one particle quantum mechanics should also have this kind of symmetry yeah. good. So, so this is, in fact, not just a, a reinterpretation what we are looking so far. This is actually a very deep dynamical principle, okay? So this is, in fact, a dynamical, a deep, let me emphasize this is a deep dynamical principle. This principle, so, so essentially you have gauge interactions, gauge symmetries, or in other words, local symmetries, can be used to determine interactions, okay? Okay, or in, uh, uh, in other words, the interactions, all interactions in nature, turns out they are related to some gauge symmetries. So, so this applies to all interactions in nature. So apply 
So this principle applies to all interactions in nature. Okay. So, so here we see in the in the electromagnetic interactions, since the same thing happens for the weak image, uh, for the weak interaction, same thing happens for the strong interaction, and the same thing happens for gravity. They all can be formulated as a consequence of uh, uh, of some local symmetries. Okay, some local symmetries. And why is that the case? We don't really know. We don't really uh, uh, understand why somehow this dynamical principle should be there. Uh, but, uh, but this is just a fact, uh, that all our fundamental interactions, they can all be understood this way. Okay. So we, we roughly understand, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, but going into that is, uh, uh, will be a long story. Yes? Um, so people sometimes say that gauge invariance is like an ambiguity of the theory. Yeah, so yeah. You can so if your, your fields by whatever in the theory is invariant, how well, yeah. can like an ambiguity in your description leads to something very physical, which is being interactive. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so, uh, so we emphasized, so when you say ambiguity, this is what we said earlier, that the gauge, uh, local symmetries uh, or gauge symmetry they just tells you your theory uh, that the, uh, uh, the degrees of freedom are redundant. Okay, some of the degrees of freedom just not important. Then you say this should be pretty artificial, right? They just tell you you have some redundant degrees of freedom, you just get rid of them. But it turns out that they actually, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, so this, is a, this, uh, this is part of the mystery. Okay, and this is a part of the mystery why somehow uh, uh, the gauge symmetry uh, and leads to the interactions. Yeah. So, so yeah. Let me just. Yeah, it's a long story. Let me just briefly uh, 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 make some comments here. Okay. So, so now we more or less understand that the, all these interactions, they all essentially the uh, uh, all these uh, important interactions in nature, uh, uh, those fundamental interactions, they all governed by some massless particle. Okay, uh, uh, they, they're all governed by some massless particle. But somehow to describe ma a massless particle, you actually require to have some kind of redundancy to, uh, so that you can describe them uh, in a Lorentz covariant way. Without, the uh, without those redundancy, you cannot describe them in a Lorentz covariant way. So in a sense, that's uh, uh, where that comes from. Yeah, but to make the statement uh, uh, which I just said pr uh, precise is actually a long story. Do you have any questions? Yes? Would it have been possible to quantize the Maxwell theory just using a zero and a zero without involving any other kind of Um we we don't know how to so we don't know how to uh, uh, there's no good way to quantize that uh, to give you a nice quantum theory. And we also know that the, uh, physically, a mu actually plays a role. Uh, and uh, yeah, like uh, in, in situations like a hollow bomb effect, the a mu plays important role even when E and B is equal to zero. So, so a mu is a more fundamental object uh, than E and B. So E and B should be considered as a derived object from, from a mu. Other questions? Yes? So here it was like quite natural to expect that somehow like the detector would identify the things that it was already there and then have to engineer it, I guess. Yeah. But is there a, like a situation where extending the symmetry to a scale number field causes an issue when you're trying to fix your gauge and so you have to kind of like increase your redundancy, I guess, when you're like making this sort of thing? Uh, uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Like, so here we, we had the, the issue in which the gauge field to fix them yeah. was from... No, no, we're not doing any gauge fixing. Uh, here we just uh, 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 have, a, uh, uh, have a more generalized uh, uh, gauge symmetry. We're not but doing any gauge fixing. No, 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 I'm saying, so that came out of the, like, the, the local gauge symmetry of uh, our AMU, but I'm saying when you extend that to uh, size like this, yeah. do you get... What do you mean by other issues? So issues when you're fixing your gauge, or is that just a step that we already did before that we don't have to worry about? 
Oh, 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 you mean when we, yeah, no, no, no uh, 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 that won't change much be, because we, uh, we did before for the gauge uh, fixing already in CNAV. Okay, so now let's talk about the other example. So, so if you have a scalar field which is charged, say complex scalar field, you can also couple it to, to, uh, to the photon, okay, uh, 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 as follow, uh, 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 as what we did for the, for the fermions, okay. So let's consider if you have a, a complex scalar, so consider you have a complex scalar. <coughs> yeah, maybe you can also have some interaction terms, okay? So, so let's imagine we have some complex scalar. And uh, so this is invariant on the phi goes to, again, uh, uh, there's a global symmetry, U1 global symmetry. Uh, 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 alpha equal to constant, okay? And then we have a, a, a conserved current here, J mu equal to minus I. So again, the, uh, you lose the current. Okay? So, so now you can just try to do the same trick, okay? So, so let's just couple this theory, combine this theory uh, to the Maxwell theory, okay? But identify that J with this J, okay? So, so naively, so the reason I say naively because this procedure, in this case, will not work. So now we can consider the scalar QED, say we, uh, with photon couple, and, the, uh, and the again, with this minus one, half, uh, one quarter F square term, so, so let me just write the simplified version of it, just write the F square. And then you, then you can add this scalar Lagrangian, okay? And now you, gen, now you add the coupling E, and then you can put A mu equal to J mu, but uh, uh, with J mu given by this. Okay, uh, 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 with A mu given by this, okay? So this is a naive thing, uh, so this is a natural thing to do based on our fermion story. Based on our fermion story. And uh, uh, um, but, th but now you can check, but now you can easily check Okay, so, so I will not do the exact check here. You should check yourself. This theory is not, so let me call this L prime, okay? L tilde, because this is our naive theory. You can check that this L tilde QED, scalar QED, is not invariant. Gauge invariant. Okay, means that you cannot find, you cannot find the transformation on phi, okay, that this whole thing is gauge invariant. Okay, this whole thing is gauge invariant. And uh, uh, um, so for example, so it's not gauge invariant. For example, we can check explicitly if you just copy what we do here, okay, that this phi x, given by I E lambda X phi X. So this won't work, okay? So it's not in worried. Okay. Yes? Can you just leave phi the same? No, you cannot leave phi the same. Uh, 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 yeah, that's a very good question. So, so you, uh, 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 you cannot leave phi the same. It's because the, um, so naively, you can ask yourself, you say, this is supposed to be conserved, and we previously said if we couple A mu to a conserved current, this is gauge invariant. But this is conserved 
only when you use the equation motion of this theory. But now when you couple this to, to this theory, then the equation motion for phi change. And then, and then, and then so, <laughs> yeah, so no longer uh, works, okay. And so just naively do this, uh, 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 naively do this is not guaranteed to work. Turns out in the fermion case, it just worked uh, because of the existence of this symmetry, okay, Be because of the existence of that symmetry. Okay. And it turns out that this theory, so, so now this theory will not be gauging variant, and now this will be bad. Okay, we'll be bad be, because you can no longer find any sim, any local symmetry. This theory is uh, is invariant. Okay, uh, and just uh, 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 this is one of generalization that does not work. You cannot find uh, uh, anything. You can also not find others. But this is bad because we said we need gauge symmetry to get rid of unphysical degree freedom in a mu, because a mu should only have two polarization, not have four. So we need those gauge symmetries to get rid of the unphysical degree freedom in a mu. But if this gauge symmetry is broken by coupled to the scalar field, uh, and then this theory cannot be consistent. Okay, so this theory is bad. Okay, this theory is bad. And it turns out we can just generalize this principle, okay? We say let's just re uh, impose gauge symmetry, okay? We can just impose gauge symmetry. So the way out, we can just impose the gauge symmetry. Impose the theory to be invariant. Under this general uh, 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 a mu goes to a mu plus partial mu lambda, and uh, and the phi goes to exponential minus i.e. lambda x phi. Okay, so, so, uh, so we uh, 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 require this to be under that. Okay. So, so to write a theory invariant under this, we can just easily follow the insight we already obtained from the uh, fermionic case. But in the fermionic case, we were told that this this derivative, this capital D actually transforms nicely under such, uh, uh, such transformation. When we make such transformation, whether psi is a fermion or boson, whether it's a scalar or a spinner, does not play any role. Okay? So, so we can now just introduce D phi. We can just introduce D phi equal to partial mu phi minus IE a mu phi. Okay, we can similarly introduce d phi like this. And now, you, now d phi then transform nicely under this kind of transformation. Okay, so d phi Okay, then, then transform nicely. And since this transform nicely, and then we can easily write down the Lagrangian. Okay, so, so the L scalar QED then can be written as just minus one quarter f square. And then now, I, instead of the standard derivative, I use this derivative. I use this d derivative, capital D derivative. Okay? And then I have m square phi star, and then I can have phi phi star. Okay? And so this is will be invariant. Because those don't matter, because those don't involve in derivatives, okay? And so, uh, 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 um, yeah. So, uh, uh, so this is now gauge invariant. Okay? So this d mu is called covariant derivative, okay? Because it transforms nicely under this uh, 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 gauge transformation. So, so it's called covariant derivative. So this capital D mu is also, uh, 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 also have very deep mass, uh, connection to mathematics. Uh, and so this is related to a subject 
say, in differential geometry, uh, uh, a deep connection to uh, uh, to, a sub, uh, uh, to to differential geometry, uh, to a thing uh, uh, in, in differential geometry called the connection. Okay, uh, uh, called a connection, and uh, yes, yeah, so I will not go into that. Uh, um, yeah. So so now now let's compare this theory with that uh, uh, that naive theory. So you can check that L Q S Q D is almost that L tilde S Q D, except this have one more term. So 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 the difference with the fermion case. Yeah, the Fermi only have one derivative, okay, and, uh, and this one does not have derivative, okay, and here you have two derivatives, and each derivative give you additional a mu, okay, so so when you expand this, so here there are four terms, okay, there are four terms, and the three terms are encoded in here. Okay, three terms are encoded in here and in here, but there's one more term. Okay, uh, it turns out this means one more term. Okay. So actually, there's a quartic interaction between a mu and the phi. Okay. So uh, so this only introduces cubic interaction. So if you just have this j mu a mu, you only have cubic interaction. You only have two phi and one a. But but here because of this structure you actually have two a, uh, also a term is two a and two phi. Okay. And when you add this term, and then the whole thing is nice. Okay. Good. Any questions? Yes. Sorry, say it again. Can it also add like the quartic term or some higher order term into the uh, QED? No, 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 you cannot add this term uh, uh, because the, uh, this term by itself is not gauging margin. Uh, the Fermi term is already gauging margin by itself. Because the, uh, there's no derivative here, and, uh, and so the structure is simpler. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can engineer more complicated term, but not this kind of term. Yeah. This, is a, this like, is required. Yeah, yeah. This is required for gauging markets. Yeah, you can write down for both fermion and the scalar case. You can write down more complicated terms, which are gauging variant, and the uh, 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 and the one I uh, uh, we wrote down so far is just the simplest one. Yeah, simplest ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's still. So when you uh, 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 interpret the electric current, it's still this JMU. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, great. So, so now, so let me just make a comment. So in this story. Now the global charge before, okay, so now become the, uh, yeah, just emphasize again, in the scalar case, again, the, uh, the global charge for this global current, and now become the, uh, the electric charge coupled to the electric magnetic fields. Okay, become electric charge coupled to electric magnetic fields. Okay. okay, good, so let's draw the uh, uh, Feynman rules, okay. So from here, we can just uh, talk about the Feynman rules. So let's first do the Fermionic case. So the rules for Fermion is the same as before. The only thing we just need to write down the, uh, uh, the propagator for f uh, uh, the propagators are the same as previously for for the uh, for the Maxwell theory and for the uh, uh, yeah let's first do the QED and the propagator for 
for a mu and psi same as before, okay? Because the propagator only care about the quadratic theory, uh, don't care about the interactions. Same as before. So we can draw a wavy line corresponding to a mu, okay? And then, then, the, then the solid line corresponding to, say, psi, okay? Solid line corresponding to psi. So, so this is related to a mu propagator, this is related to psi propagator, okay? And now the interaction between them, this interaction between them is uh, given by this term. And then this have the structure. You have a one fermion come in. You have two fermions and then couple to a photon, okay? So this is the same, very similar to this recover coupling we considered before, it's just now this one become a photon. Okay, this one become a photon. <laughs> And this effective vertex is given by minus i e a mu, or, or gamma mu. Okay, so, so, uh, uh, so minus come from minus here, the i come from the i in the action, okay, but when you do the passing, you go to action, and you have minus i e, and then, and then psi, psi, and a mu are taken care of by those lines, and then you only have a gamma mu, okay? So, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so the vertex here is gamma mu. But pay attention that this gamma mu is actually a matrix, okay, in the spinner space. And so you have to be careful when you contract the spinner indices and be, because now this have spinner indices and it's a matrix. Okay. Good, so this is the, for, the, for the scalar, or uh, uh, for, the, for the fermion. And, uh, oh, yeah, so, uh, so I should also mention uh, for the external, uh, for the external legs, so this is for the um, for the vertices and the propagator, and if we can see the scattering amplitude, so. For scattering amplitude, we mentioned before, for fermion, we need to include the polarization vector. Similarly, for the photon, we also need to include the polarization vector, uh, 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 polarization uh, 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 factor uh, for the external lax. Okay, so, so for external lax, for scattering amplitude, So for, um, yeah, if you calculate the green function, it doesn't matter. Uh, 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 it, you just include the external propagator. And the, but for the, uh, for the scattering amplitude, then we need to include the, uh, 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 the polarization vector for photons. So for the initial state, suppose in the initial state we have, say, some vector k and alpha. So alpha determines, uh, gives this polarization vector, and the k is the momentum. And then we can denote it as, so alpha denotes the uh, uh, polarization for the, uh, uh, and then say we can have a k. Uh, so this is a momentum uh, index. Uh, uh, so this is a momentum arrow, okay? And uh, so, so this goes and corresponding to, yeah. okay, okay? And uh, so this is for the initial state, then for the final state, If you have a photon in the final state like this, and then again we just have a alpha, and so normally we draw the momentum arrow to come out if you have a final state, and then the polarization factor will be just this star, okay. Just the complex conjugate, okay, it's very easy, okay? Uh, um, so, so, so when you write down the amplitude, you just have to be careful. Uh, uh, for the for external photon lag, you have to include the uh, polarization vector. So for scalar QED, it's very similar. So here we can introduce a dashed line that corresponding to a scalar propagator. 
okay? So uh, 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 corresponding to the scalar propagator, okay? And now this arrow now has a meaning big, big, because the scalar has a charge, okay? A scalar has a charge. And so this arrow is not the momentum arrow you can do arbitrarily. And so, so there, so there are worries. So, and then there's, uh, 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 <clears throat> yes, uh, and then, so for QED, so let's look at the interaction with the photon, and then we have this vertex, and we also have this vertex, okay, with J mu uh, 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 covered to that, okay? So, so then, the, uh, then that kind of interaction, they have the following form. So this J mu coupling is easy. We can schematically write it down. So again, just you have two phi and then couple to a photon, okay? Couple to a photon, okay? And, uh, and the photon, uh, 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 so that vertex, so A mu have an index, and so we can put the mu here, okay? And this vertex is given by minus i e k plus k prime mu. Okay, suppose the momentum here is k, and the momentum here is k prime, okay? So let's, yeah. So the reason you have this k plus k prime mu is because here there's a derivative acting on phi, uh, and so, uh, so this uh, derivative acting on this phi give you a k1, a k, and this derivative on phi give you the k, a k prime, okay? And, uh, and you have the sum of these two terms, and so that's why you have this kind of term, okay? For the intact, yes? Yeah. Yeah, the same. Yeah, so fermion, uh, it, it external lacks the exactly the same as before. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so we only need to introduce new rules for photon. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, 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 that rule is exactly the same. That's right, that's right. Yeah, so now you have just be careful. Some of the vertices, now including matrices. Yeah. Yes? Is it so possible that like for the Hmm? Is it so possible that they like the Yeah, 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 they do. Yeah, yeah, for the physical photon, yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, uh, for the physical photon, uh, indeed, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, is it complex? Oh. You can choose it to be complex. Yeah, you can, for example, if you choose a spherically uh, 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 polarization, uh, then it's a complex vector. Yeah, uh, 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 for the one we wrote down, it's real, uh, 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 but then this complex is the same, yeah. Yes? Maybe it's just this, but when you have like an internal photon emitting diagram, do you sum over like all four polarizations or just two? <laughs> The internal photon, you always just use the internal, uh, you just use the photon propagator. Right. And, uh, and the photon propagator will include everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yes? The internal vertices are the means to keep knowing. That's just a byproduct of the number of degrees of freedom you have per particle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, you mean the gamma mu? Yeah. Yeah, it's just because of spinner nature, right? Okay, good. So this vertex, so A mu, J mu give you this vertex, but we also have this vertex. And this vertex is easy. We essentially just have two fermions, or uh, two scalars. But this one, and with two photons, okay? With two photons. And so this have A mu, A mu, contract it, so if we write mu here, and the nu here, and then we will have minus, okay, i.e. square, eta mu mu, okay? Okay, minus i.e. square mu, okay? So, so minus i for the same reason, and e square for the same reason, uh, and this a mu contracted, so you have a eta mu mu there, okay? Good? 
And if, depend on what is V here, phi may have some additional interaction. But suppose V is given by phi 4, okay, suppose, suppose V, say, is equal, uh, equal to lambda 4 and the phi, phi star square, okay? And then, uh, 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 and then you will also have interactions like this, four, four scalar interactions. Okay, yeah, you have, uh, let's see, you have two come in, two come out, okay? And, uh, and this will be just minus I lambda, okay? Yes? Can you explain the difference between two scalars and the difference between two scalars? Oh, right, right, it comes from this term. Come from this term. So, so this is a mu times j, and the j have two phi's here. Other questions? Yes? Well, would it be possible just to like hypothetically if I wanted to like give the photon mass? Like I just add a mass term to the whole class here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, what's the question? Sorry, is it, is it possible? <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Is, is it possible to add like a mass term to the photon, like an inner vector? No, you cannot. Okay. No, because that violates the gauge symmetry. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so the gauge symmetry is what ensures the photon is massless. Yeah, so that's why this is something uh, uh, we don't want to break, yeah. Mm. Other questions? Sorry, this might be a very silly question, but like if you have, if there's a scalar cube and then there's this term you have Q, you can add them, like. Yeah, you can add them. Then this is the one theory, and then you just have this whatever number, like you can yeah. combine. Yeah, 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 you can combine them. Just like you have a, 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 a theory uh, uh, the electromagnetic field coupled both to charged scalar and the charged uh, fermions. Yeah, yeah, you can certainly combine them. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm uh, separating them just for convenience. Yeah. Uh, so, can I have an interesting term here? So, you can choose uh, a fermion term and a scalar term? Oh, you can. Yeah, you can add whatever. Just every, uh, uh, you only have to make sure things are gauge invariant. Uh, and you can add arbitrary interactions you want. Uh, just you have to make sure the environment under those gauge transformations. Yeah. So, so, so let's ask the other question. Can we make another theory uh, that has like this effect? That has E1 gauge symmetry with, with massless, uh, with, ma with, with massive uh, photons? With massive particle, uh, uh, massive instead, photon? Instead of photon, like we have something that has like that, that, that is massive and like coupled to the uh, Can we do that? Can no, no, no. You're asking whether the, uh, the massive photon coupled to uh, um, coupled to uh, 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 fermionic field exists. No. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so this question can be answered in in, in several. Uh, 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 so, so if you just directly add a mass term, so let's say let's add a mass term for the photon. Okay, so this you can immediately check this is not gauge invariant. So that's the reason we didn't add such a term to the Maxwell theory, because in the Maxwell theory, if you add this term, it will violate the gauge symmetry. Uh, the same reason here. So you cannot add such a term. Okay, so, uh, so you cannot add such a term. So this is uh, a ruled out, okay? Uh, you cannot add this. But now you say, is it possible somehow through some other way that the photon actually gain mass, okay? That's possible. That's called the Higgs mechanism. That's how Higgs got the Nobel Prize. So, and that's come from this term. So now you imagine somehow this phi now have a vacuum expectation value. And now, uh, now phi has a constant part. If phi has a constant part, then this become a mass term for the photon, okay? And then the photon become massive. And actually that's precisely what's happening inside the superconductor. 
So in every superconductor, something like this happened. Okay, uh, and uh, and the photon, uh, 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 the photon uh, uh, inside the superconductor is massive. Okay, that's uh, uh, what is responsible for the for, for this all London effect, or uh, a massive effect, etc. Okay, and uh, and that uh, in the superconductor that's understood by uh, by Philip Anderson, which he uh, 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 he was a little bit unhappy because he thought he should have claim for the Higgs effect. Uh, because he understood it earlier, and uh, uh, yeah, but he did understand the mechanism uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Higgs uh, got a Nobel Prize because he predicted the particle. Anyway, uh, 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 that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> without time to go into. Yeah. Just a quick question. Uh, for quantum propagators, uh, do we give the same factor? Because I don't think we said in the previous lecture that we give the same factor as for uh, scalar field. Uh, Sorry, say it again? For photon propagator, yeah. which factor do we give? Uh, which factor? Yeah. You like, mean, we, we just use the photon propagator. Yeah, because I don't think we did it in the previous lecture. Uh, we did. Yeah. Yeah, the end of last lecture. Yeah, let me just write it down. So, so, so the photon propagator, so the photon propagator depends on uh, uh, this parameter psi. For psi equal to one, the photon propagator, uh, uh, if I call it d mu mu, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, uh, let me just write down. Uh, for psi equal to one, this is just given by meter mu mu, k squared minus epsilon. So this is for psi equal to one. So, so, so for psi not equal to one, uh, uh, so yeah, so this is for psi equal to one. For psi not equal to one, then there are some additional terms. Yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, this mechanism is what is responsible for the weak interaction is short ranged. So, oh, okay. yeah, so the weak interaction started as massless particle, but then through the Higgs mechanism, and then then the uh, then the analog of a mu for the weak interaction become massive, and then become short ranged. Got it. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. Good. Other questions? Yes. Um, so, so in the standard model, there's only Higgs is the only scalar field. Yeah. But you can have some other composite scalars like pions. Yeah, fundamental scalars is it, it, it just the Higgs field. Good. Okay, good. So, so this uh, concludes the discussion of the QED. And now we can now ready just to study the physical processes uh, in QED, okay? And before doing that, we need to develop a little bit formalism uh, 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 because the, when we talk about physical processes, then we need to make connection. Yeah, because QED is real life, okay? Uh, and, and then we can, uh, uh, then we can make, make connection with the real experiments, okay? Uh, uh, to make connection with the real experiment, we need to develop one more thing. We need to develop one more thing. So this is the, um, uh, we need to learn how to calculate the cross section. So let's talk about how to calculate cross section. So this is a dig digression. Okay. So so first let's remind you how we calculate how we define uh, a cross section in non relativistic quantum mechanics. Okay, in the scattering theory of uh, non relativistic quantum mechanics. So so in non relativistic quantum mechanics. So you consider there's a target. So target is normally considered to be a point. Okay, here I just make it big so that we can see it. So so here is the target. And then we 
uh, and then we define an axis, the scattering axis, which the particle come in. So this is some incident beam of particle. Okay, coming into this direction. So say this is a z direction. Okay, and uh, uh, and moving in this direction to and then then it will interact with this particle and then will scatter. Okay, so the particle will scatter, and then we uh, then we put the detector around the uh, uh, around this uh, 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 target particle to to detect to detect those scattered particle. Okay, so so for example, yeah, so so you should view this uh, solid angle here. Okay, and so this is the phi direction, and so so this is the theta direction. Okay, <coughs> so so here is the. So, so here is the theta direction, and this is some small solid angle, uh, 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 which the detector, say, s suppose there's a detector here, okay. Suppose there's a detector here, and then this detector spread a solid angle, d omega, respect to the target, okay. So, so this is the standard setup for long relativistic stick. Uh, for, for scattering process in the uh, in the uh, non relativistic quantum mechanics so uh, so what we measure what we measure is dn dt outgoing particle okay scattered particle in the theta and the phi direction okay so so so, so this is theta and the phi. This is where the uh, detector locates. Okay, in the theta phi direction. So, so this is the number. So this dnt is the number of particles. Number of scattered particles. Number of scattered particles in per unit time. In the detector, means going registered by the detector, detected by the detector at the location theta phi. Okay. Okay. So 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 the quant uh, quantity we measure is this quantity. Okay, we just put the detector there, we just measure particles, okay? And clearly, so, so this thing depends on many things, okay? This quantity depends on many things, depends on the interaction between the, the, uh, uh, between the interaction between the incident the particle and the target, etc. But it also depends on many other kinematic factors, okay? So for example, it will depend on This out clearly will depend on the uh, the number of incident particle. Okay, so this is the number of incident particle per unit time. If you have more incident particle, of course, you will detect more outgoing particle, okay? And of course, this will also proportional to the omega, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the solid angle uh, extended by the detector. So if you have a larger detector, of course, you will detect more particles, okay? So, and then we take, so if you, we divide it by those kinematic, obvious kinematic factors away, then we will get something more intrinsic to the interactions, okay? So,
So we can consider, so we can divide by the omega and divide by this thing. So this object, dn dt, then we divide by the omega per, per solid angle out, and div divided by the incident number of particles per unit time. So this should give us the probability of a particle to be scattered to theta phi direction. Okay, so this is the quantity which uh, captures the effect of the interaction. Okay, so this is a more intrinsic quantity. But, but experimentally, this is actually not the thing we directly measure in the experiment. Because in the experiment, it's not easy to count the number of the incident particles. Okay, we always consider a beam of particles. Okay, we uh, uh, always consider a large number of particles, a beam of particles. So, so experimentally, it's more convenient We often use is the uh, the incident flux is the is the number of particle per unit time and per unit area. Okay, so we just send the beam, and we just need to know the density of the beam. Okay, so so uh, and so that will give us the flux. Okay, the uh, number of particles in going uh, per unit time and per unit area. So A is the cross section uh, of the incident beam, okay? So now this is the quantity, uh, and now we have to divide, uh, 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 so instead of divide by this one, we divide by this one, okay? So, so, so now, this d sigma d omega, which then is defined to be d n dt, the omega out, and then you divide it by incident flux, okay? Uh, incident flux per unit time, okay? So, so that's the object we uh, uh, we actually measure, okay? So this is called the uh, um, so this so some comment on this. So the first comment. Is that this has dimension of area? So because this thing is dimensionless, okay, this thing is dimensionless because t cancelled. But now we have divided by dA, so a going up, and then uh, then this have dimension of area. So the physical meaning of this, which I'm sure you learned in your uh, uh, in your uh, long relativistic quantum mechanics class. He said this gives you the physical meaning of this object. So this gives you the effective area of interaction. Okay, so, um, so heuristically, you can imagine the following. So if you imagine the, uh, the incident particle and this target particle, they actually have some short range interaction, okay? And then uh, and they, they no longer interact, say, 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 outside some distance. And then heuristically, and then this quantity then can be considered as give you the area, uh, give you the uh, uh, the area of interaction, which around this uh, 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 target particle, okay, around the target particle. So, so that's why this d sigma, the omega is called the differential cross section.
So uh, uh, the area which going into the direction of theta phi, and the sigma total, which is defined to be the sigma d omega u integrated then over all angle. Okay, so this is a function of theta and phi, and now you integrate over all solid angle, and then that gives you the total cross section. Okay, and to see this effective area of interaction can be seen in the very simple uh, uh, classical example. So this definition actually is not quantum mechanical. You can also do it classically, okay? It's not restricted to quantum mechanics. Uh, 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 this can be defined for any scattering event, including in, in, in classical mechanics. So for example, if you uh, uh, have classical scattering, say of some bullets, okay, of a billet ball, and then you find the secret total, so suppose you have classical scattering, okay, and then you find the sigma total in just the cross section just the, uh, uh, the total area, total surface area. Yeah, no, it's the cross-section area. Of the billiards, okay. Be because classically, when you hit the billiard ball, then you hit the billiard ball, okay? If you don't hit the billiard ball, then you, then you don't change the direction. And then, and then the uh, uh, total cross section is just the cross section of the billet ball. Okay. And uh, and so 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 uh, when you go to quantum theory, and then this is the uh, heuristic way you understand that some kind of effective uh, cross section for for this target. Okay. And the outside that area, then then you no longer have intact. Uh, yeah, uh, heuristically you no longer have interactions. Okay, so 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 now let me just make two quick uh, 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 remark in the relativistic theory. So now we can generalize. So this discussion is in the long relativistic context. So in the relativistic context, we essentially just have the sigma cross action. Okay, from initial state to final state. Okay, we no longer have, so this is very specific. We have one particle scattered on the other particle and you, uh, uh, this particle scattered away, okay? But in, uh, but in relativistic, you can have two particles, you can create 10,000 particles, okay? And so this language no longer works, okay? So, so but still, you can define some kind of cross action of initial state alpha to some final state beta, okay? And so, we will be interested in the, in the situation which we have two initial particles, okay, because we, uh, 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 yeah, because experimentally it's convenient just to have two particle scattering. So you have two initial particles, but final state you can, can be, uh, in principle can be arbitrary, okay? And uh, so, so this object, since in, in the relativistic theory, this should be physically observable, okay? And so this should be, um, so because this essentially just measures the probability of the scattering. So we require this object to be no rent invariant. Okay? And the symmetry, and also in the relativistic, you just scatter two particles, they should, there's no notion of what's the target or what is the incident particle. Uh, uh, so these two particles should have equal role. So this should be symmetric. In one, two, okay? So if you exchange one, two, this cross action should be the same. Okay, should be the same. 
So, so now if you consider, but you can always consider in the rest frame, say, of particle two, okay? So suppose we consider the rest frame, suppose we go into the rest frame of particle two, and then, then we roughly have this situation. Okay, so, so, so this is particle two, this is particle one, which come to particle two. And then we should have the, uh, and then we can again, and then in this situation, we can define the alpha to beta based on our long white viscous considerations. And then we consider, so here I use the probability from alpha to beta dt. Okay, so this is the, essentially replace that, okay? Here, final particle only have one particle, so, uh, so you can define a solid angle. But if we have, inf but if we have 10,000 particles here, in the beta, of course, I cannot define a solid angle, okay? So, uh, so I can just uh, talk about probability from alpha to beta, okay? From alpha to beta, and but per unit time, and then again, we divide it by the incident flux of one. Okay, uh, uh, the incident flux of one. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, let me just call it in. Uh, so n y means the uh, flux, uh, uh, the number of particle uh, uh, of one. Okay. So so um, yeah. So so what we will do is that we will first calculate this object in the rest frame of two, and then we. And then we construct the Lorentz invariant version of this. Okay, so uh, 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 that's our strategy to uh, uh, to define what will be the relativistic generalization of this. Okay, so we will talk. Uh, we will discuss this next time.